Hello, welcome. In this video, as you can see here, we're looking at the rule of 72. And specifically, I want to look at how accurate it really is and why does the rule of 72 work. So let's start with the accuracy of it. And I'm assuming at this point you already know a little bit about it, but the idea is you take 72 divided by your interest as a percent, and that tells you the years that it takes for the, your money to double. And the nice thing is that you could say this is basically as accurate as it needs to be for you to do it in your head, right? This is an estimation tool for you to use. And the other part is, well, it, the, the level of accuracy really depends on the interest rate and how often your money is compounding. Is it once a year? Is it monthly? Is it weekly? How often is the money growing? So we can analyze this pretty nicely, I think, on a spreadsheet. So pause the video, go to your Google Drive, and set up a spreadsheet. Now, once the spreadsheet is open, make sure you enter your name here. I'm going to say Sean's Rule of 72 accuracy spreadsheet, something like that. And please make sure it's shared with me so that I have access to it. I want to be able to edit your work in case there are any issues. So pause the video and do that. Make sure you give it a title and make sure you change the share settings. Okay, now that you have a spreadsheet, it's named and it's shared, we should label some columns here so we can start to compare what's happening. We're going to compare the accuracy as a function of interest rate. So we're going to look at that, interest rate. And we want this column to be percents, so in percent. So we're going to click A. We're going to go to Format, Number, and let's select Percent. I think it makes the most sense here for me to pick this percent. If you don't see it, it's the whole number. Go to More, for, more Formats. That's what it looks like. Custom Number Format. And you should see it here. There's a whole bunch of choices. You should see it here towards the top or somewhere on there. Now we have percent, so I'm going to enter 1%, 2%, and why not? Let's look at it between 1 and let's go all the way up to 100%. So I think I need to go to row 101. There it goes. Now this looks better. I want to freeze this row right here, so when I scroll down I can still tell what heading I'm looking at. So I'm going to go to View, Freeze, and I want to freeze the first row. So pause the video, Again, select column, go to Format, Number, and pick Percent. And then for View, you want to go to Freeze, and you want to freeze your first row. So at this point, your first row should be frozen. Your first column is representing percents. And these two columns here, we can compare the actual time it takes for your money to double. So the I'll say the time it takes your money to double if it compounds once a year. So we're going to do once a year as our standard and then we're going to say the rule of 72 estimate. So we're comparing the actual time to the rule 2 estimate. Now at this point these cells it cuts the text off so I want to fix that. In general I'm going to click this right here, I'm going to go over and I'm going to do what's called wrapping the cells. If I click wrap, you can now see the full text there. I'm going to widen this a little bit so it looks pretty. All right, and then this is, I don't like how this looks, so I'm going to click here. I like to center everything this way and center this way as well. And now I'm a little bit happier and finally I'm going to bold that first row. There we go. So why don't you do that? Pause the video and enter these two headings in. Make sure everything's centered and then press play. Okay, so we need a formula to analyze the time it takes for your money to double. I'm going to use the natural logarithm. And if you haven't heard of that before, that's okay. Just type in LN for natural logarithm, hit enter. And we're going to compute the natural logarithm of 2. That's the doubling part. 
because your money is going to twice as big, and divide it by the natural logarithm of 1 plus our percentage rate. It's really 1 plus r, and we'll go over that formula a little bit in our next video. I'm going to hit enter. Now it tells me it takes about 69.67 years. I'm going to ignore the autofill. And now I'm getting started here. And then I'm going to go to my rule of 72 estimate. So the rule of 72 equals 72. You take 72 and you divide it by your percent. But here, I, when you divide by the rule of 72, you, you just treat the percent as a whole number. So this 1% really means 0.01. So 1% means 1 divided by 100. So we're going to do A2. We want to get rid of that dividing by 100, and we undo that by multiplying by 100. And I put that in parentheses. I hit Enter. And you can see here that there's a difference. right? The rule, two seven, the rule 72 estimate is saying it will take 72 years, when it actually only takes about 69.67 years. So there's quite a difference there. And now I want to look at the, the difference in time, uh, difference in years between the time it takes me money to double and the rule of 72 estimate. So the difference in years. In other words, how accurate is it really? That's kind of the question we're focusing on. And I'm going to do the absolute value, right? I want to take how far apart these numbers are. I don't, I don't want to get any negatives here. And I want to just do the rule of 72 minus right here b to the actual time it takes to compound. I'm going to hit enter. And what you should do at this point, you want to make sure we're getting the same numbers here. You should make sure you have the same formula as me. So let's go through those real quick. This formula says abs parentheses c2 minus b2. This says 72 divided equals 72 divided by a2 times 100. And this one says equals ln of 2, the natural log of 2, divided by the natural log of 1 plus a2. So pause the video, rewind, go back, make sure you can see those formulas, and uh, then press play when you're ready to move on. All right, we have our three formulas. I just select all three. I scroll over. And you see that black cross? That means I'm going to drag this formula, and what the sheets will do is apply those same rules, but across the interest rates on our left. So as we drag down and approach 100%, on the left, we're getting closer and closer to what we need, which is the difference in years for all the different percents. So that's everything, right? Now you can see that our differences at first, 2.33, and then everything else seems to be below one. There are some small fractions in here. and the point is, it's not always the same, but there's often a pretty small, less than a year, we should say, difference between the rule of 72 as estimate and the actual time that it takes to compound. Now, what I, I think you should do is make a graph of this. What we can do is we can select this column right here. I'm going to hold Control or Command and then click this column as well. So all I did, I'll do it again. I click A, Control or Command, holding it and then click D. So now I'm going to make a table that has the x-axis as my interest rates and the y-axis as the difference in years. And if I go to Format and I go to, oh, sorry, Insert and Chart, it'll set up a nice graph for me of this process. So you can see it's kind of interesting. Look at the story this tells. It's least accurate when it's close to um, 0%, right? But here, you can see, in fact, in this case, this higher, this high value right here, this data point, let's see if it gives it to us. Uh, it's not letting me see it. Um, these data points right here, I should be able to see them. Let me X this out. I want to be able to see what these, there it goes. So now, now that I close it out, it's letting me see. What you can do is you can kind of scroll through here. And here, it lets me see 2%. The difference in years is almost a full year. So it's about a year off. And then up here, I think, it's, there it goes. So 1%, it's pretty close to zero on this scale. It looks like it's close to zero. Maybe if I drag this, see if it gets better. Yeah, a little bit better. So here, again, you're, you're able to see how the difference in years drops. And it's most accurate here about 0.1%. 
8%, and then decreases in accuracy, but kind of hovers now as the percent rates increase, right? 47% interest rate, it's staying around 027 so again, most of your interest rates, depends on what you're dealing with, will probably be in this area. And the rule of 72 is like spot on here around these, these percents, right? It's really close to the actual different, the actual value around 8% interest. And then it kind of goes in different directions from there. So set this table up, make sure you have it. And then we want to rank these. So the way we can do that the easiest way is to click on column D. And you see this little arrow over here, it's kind of popping up. I'm going to click that. And if we sort it, we can sort it from highest to lowest or from smallest to biggest. I want to do it from smallest to biggest. And then what it does is it shifts, shuffles around the other columns to match so you don't get your data mixed up. It shows you that this is the smallest difference, 0.006 of a year. All right, it's very accurate. And that's for 9%, 8%, excuse me. That's where it's most accurate. Then 7, then 9, then 10. Let's see what else here. 11. Oops. There we go. So it's kind of hovering around 8, right? 1 below 8, 1 above 8, 2 above 8, 3 above 8 two below, it's very close there. So it's the number is around 8%. And then let's go to the least accurate. Let's see what we find there. So this is kind of an interesting group here. The least accurate uh, is 1%, then 2%, then 3 and 4%, then 97, 96, 98. So that's kind of interesting how that's hovering around those numbers. And that gives you a sense of where this is most accurate and where, where it is least accurate. All right, I hope that helped.